Yeah, so we're here, this is one, one block. So there's a lot of experiments going go on the farm. This is one block that we have um, where we did all this last year at all. Once the, once the tomato crop was done, we mowed the tomato crops down, the crop down. Um, and then we just went over here with a planter and we planted a cover crop mix in here. And it's kind of fun, you can see all the different things in here. There's legumes in here, some, some bell beans. These are peas here. There's vetches in here that look pretty, pretty vigorous. There's two or three different types of grains in here. Underneath you'll see things like uh, uh, shepherd's purse. Um, other than this might be considered a weed, but it's actually a pretty, um, pretty good crop, pretty good plant, I think, for, for, for a mix like this. We don't really worry about it going to seed. Um, so we're, we have now beds that have been here for a full year um, that were established last year in the spring a crop that went on here, a cover crop that goes over it. And so our plan here is to, and by, by the time we, this stuff gets mature enough, it's gonna be about, well, about, probably about this high, probably four, four and a half feet high wow. of okay. just dense material. And so the, the, the real question that we have um, in, in terms of this project is how you take this material and without tilling it all in, because if, you, if we had a shovel and we looked underneath here, the soil is wide open. It's beautiful. It's just real crumbly. Mm -hmm. We have worms in there that have been, been working in here all winter long. And in fact, all last year. They've established their relationship to the, to the soil profile. So they, they've worked all that soil up and churned that soil for us. And we have all of that decomposing material on the top. So the idea we're thinking that we're going to do is we're going to just roll this down. So we, with a roller that will crimp it and break the, break the stem, basically crush the stem where the crimper goes over, like that, and you'll see how that's just crushed. And that will stop this plant from moving the, its photosynthate back down into the root and, a lot, and, and, and disturb the uh, flow of nutrients back up into the plant. So basically by crimping this stem, just breaking it, not cutting it, we'll be able to have this lie down and become a mulch. Okay, so we're growing our mulch in place here. That's right. where we want to go. Then the question is for us is what happens when we put a plant in here or a seed in here? Yeah. That's, that's really the one, the, the whole area that we're, we're going out a little bit on a limb here because there are people who are doing it with things like corn and soybeans in the Midwest. We're not real sure how it's going to work here yeah. in California if we're growing a vegetable crop. So. We're hoping that what we can do when we roll it down is we have a tool that will split it and open it. Just open a little slot like that, mm -hmm. push the material aside, and in that we'll be able to plant a seed, and then all of this other material will just act like mulch. So the key that we're working, beginning to believe is if we can keep our ground covered, mm -hmm. it's really critical. That's what nature does with all soil. It keeps right. ground, unless it's a place where there's been huge erosion, all soil tends to be covered and it tends to figure out how way to do that. We're gonna try and keep the ground covered. We're gonna try and make that mulch die in place so we're not moving mulch in, carrying it in, mulching beds. Right. And then we're gonna to have to figure out how we put a seed in there and have that seed prosper. I think what I've been reading is that you want to introduce that seed as quickly as possible. Okay, we did a trial um, two years ago where we rolled it down. It didn't want to die, so we rolled it again. It didn't want to die, we rolled it again. You know, and all these oats just kept putting their little heads up because they wanted to make seed. We finally took the sheep, we put the sheep out there, they ate off all the, he the oat heads, and the material finally died. But it was like about a three, uh, three week period there that we were trying to play with it dying. Well, so we've done different things, we've added Different, different plants that when we crush them, this plant, for example, when we crush this bell bean, I think this is gonna die a lot more readily. Sure. Okay, so this yeah. kind of stem will, will, so we've added more of this. We don't know how the, they'll all work in, in together, but that's part of the experiment. But we're, what we're hoping that we'll, we'll do is we have enough material here, it will kind of lay down on itself and, and not allow everything to come back up. And then when we put the seed in there, we're hoping that if we, say, then have some regrowth out on the side of the seed thing, yeah. we're talking about maybe a roller that will roll on the side of the seed. So mm. instead, of, instead of rolling the whole bed, we'll keep the seed line intact, mm -hmm. and then we'll roll on the outside of that. Okay. So we can use a roller like a cultivator, ah. perhaps, and just continue to roll it until it finally is willing to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, if you think about it, we've all 
evolved with this idea of a plow. An acre is related to how far a plowman can plow in a day. Yeah. A furlong is how <laughs> far you that. go, how far you go before you have to take a rest <laughs> with your, with your uh, oxen. So that's a furlong, and an acre is related to how far, how much you plow. That's why it's such an odd, why 43,500 sure. <laughs> square feet? Right. It's, it's such an odd number, but it was related to oxen and plowing. So all of the tools that I learned about farming were about bare soil. When you mm -hmm. want to build a garden, you work your ground up, you rototiller, whatever, and you get bare soil. And then all the tools beyond that to plant to cultivate, to harvest, to manage that crop, we're all based on that concept. Right. We take a step back and we say, what if we didn't want to till? What were the tool what would be the tools that we would develop? It's a whole new mm. line of thinking. If we were to take make that our standard, the soil doesn't get tilled, I think we'll come up with a whole new set of tools. Yeah. Right? And they'll and then we can make it work. It doesn't, we're trying to do it organically. We, we don't believe in herbicides. We think that this vitality in this ground is really critical. So we're trying to stay away from any, any kind of notion that you spray a herbicide. We think that we can do it by finding the right mix. And there's literally thousands and thousands of different mixes that we can put together. Sure. That, and this year we had 35 inches of rain out here. With having this cover crop here, all that water went in the ground very little, little, little went off the field. Um, basically, that's money that's that's gone into our, our system in terms of water energy. Right. That's pushed. That's opened the ground deeper. It's allowed root penetrate deeper. Mm -hmm. It's pushed mm -hmm. anything any toxins that might be in the top of that soil out of the system. Um, and um, so I think that the idea of having a green cover crop like this is not only harvesting sunlight through photosynthesis and feeding our soil. But it's also slowing water down, so the water we have that do, does fall here lands and stays in the ground. And in the long term, the way we're going to conserve water in all of these systems is by putting more carbon in the ground, which is what we're doing right now. And that carbon becomes the basis of healthier water cycles, where water utilization is enhanced by having more carbon. But our history of tool development has always been about how do we make it bare? And that's, that's what we have. And I mm -hmm. grew up in that system. And, and I have tools that we do a good job when the ground is bare. <laughs> right. It's easy to plant and cultivate. And we have all those tools. But this is something that comes from a whole different perspective. How do we deal with this? What's here? These ladybugs will be here. Um, it's much gentler to roll it down than it is to come in here with a flail mower and flail it all up. Okay? And um, when you dig dig down in here, there's there's many many earthworms in each shovelful. And we you know very seldom have to intervene for pest issues. We you know in the springtime we anticipate that we're going to have aphid, um, and in the fall there's there's periods when the aphid load will get heavy. In fact, you'll see on some of the bell beans there they're a host for some black pea aphids. There are the aphids in there. Okay, so we know they're going to come. They're in here. These beans are, are a magnet for those aphids, but the ladybugs that we see out here, and they're in pretty good numbers, we'll keep these guys in check. So by having, having a system where we know we're gonna have a problem here, and then we've got these guys in here. Here's a ladybug on a pea, on a, on a bell bean. They're, they're out here, and there's some level of stasis, right? Right. It's, there's a balance goes mm -hmm. on here. And um, if we didn't have the diversity here, we wouldn't have the pollen and the nectar. Here's another ladybug here. I mean, they're just, they're out here and they show up. Mm -hmm. But you have to have something for them to eat. Mm -hmm. So if we have a field that's, there's, where there isn't this smorgasbord, here's another one right here. You know, there isn't this smorgasbord out here. They're not going to be here. So they show up. And one of the things that bothers me about what I do is if I come out here and mow this, I'm just chopping them all up. And I don't want to do that. It's what's really nice about livestock, if you put sheep in here when it's not too wet, they'll come and eat this and the ladybugs will have a chance to move on. Mm -hmm. Okay? So will the beneficial insects, the lace wings and the other things that are out here. Right. Um, but if we if we mow it all down, we've just gone back to square one. Got it. And I just think like we've not been building the system like we could. By you know, thinking about what nature wants as opposed to what tools we have. Right. So Look this is that. what you want to have in your soil. Mm. This soil has been worked over by all, so you got a little bit of decomposing material on top. I don't know if, and you have then this, this structure here. And this structure is created by root systems and other things that 
exude um, uh, glomalin and other things and break up soil structure and make it nice and crumbly like this. In all of these spaces here, there's uh, the water can move down, but there's oxygen in here. It's pretty healthy. That's amazing soil. And so this is kind of what we have right now. Everywhere we've got a cover crop. We've got beautiful soil. And I don't see a lot of worms in here right now, but, but, but this is the end of the field where there was a little more water. But this is a good, good because the decomposition is happening here on the soil. This is old tomato plants. It's now broken down. It becomes, the, the worms will actually pull this down into the nice. soil. It becomes way more stable carbon. In here there's some legumes. You'll see the nitrogen being fixed. So these, these little nodules are from the rhizobium bacteria that are working with this vetch plant and they are they are making making nitrogen. They're taking nitrogen out of the air and putting it in my ground. So I've got a nitrogen cycle here that's working for me. Okay, these all these nodules are little sites for bacteria living in association with this legumous root. But you can see nodulation all along this root here. And actually they say if you open these guys up like this, this little nodule, and you squeeze it, you can see it's pink inside. And that shows you the presence of the rhizobium bacteria, that little color there. But those are all nodules that have where the rhizobium bacteria are living in association with the plant root, and these little nodules are all nitrogen places or sites where nitrogen is being fixed. That's fantastic. So I'm I'm harvesting carbon, getting it out of the air and putting it in the ground. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I am um, having biology open my soil and do my my plowing and my disking for me. I have nutrients moving up and down through the system. I've got healthy decomposition. I'm harvesting nitrogen out of the air. Absolutely. So we're, we're breathing, 78% of what we're breathing right now is nitrogen. It goes into the ground, or it's in the air in a form that we can't use in the, in the soil, but these bacteria make it in a plant usable form. So they're working for me. This is all a system that's working for me. These ladybugs, uh, you can go try and buy them by the gallon. You know, um, but they're here. They'll, they're here because there's pollen. This 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 shepherd's purse early on makes pollen for them. It's, okay. It blooms pretty early. Mm -hmm. They'll show up when there's stuff for them to eat. Here's what they're going to be eating. Right there's the aphids. Right. I could be worried about those. I'm not going to worry about them because soon you're going to see aphid lions on here. You're going to see um, other beneficials out here. They're going to be eating these guys, and it'll be a It'll be a, um, a smorgasbord for a lot of creatures. I mean, things can get out of whack. We're not always in control of it. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's you're orchestrating you know, a bit through management. Right. You know.